Hi there, Stephanie here. I want to talk a little bit today about the three-tiered model within Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, or MTSS. I don't think I've really done a video where I describe the characteristics of each of the three tiers. So I'd like to try that today and get your response and reaction. I want to start by some sort of big ideas that frame the concepts that underlie the multi-tiered systems of support model. First of all, it is really grounded in better outcomes. It's focused on the needs of students, not necessarily uh, the needs of adults. Taking into consideration the needs of adults and the context of the school, but really being focused on student outcomes. Uh, second big idea is that MTSS is focused on prevention. The origin is in looking for a parallel to what we do in public health and applying that to education. So the tiers of instruction in MTSS are about prevention of reading failure. That's the origin. Second, or should I say third, big idea concept is that we need to create a system of supporting students that is seamless and integrates regular education and special education supports. And then finally, a big idea concept behind MTSS is about resource allocation. We want to apply the smallest amount of resources to student concerns that will get the biggest impact for students. So we don't wanna have situations where we are initially applying a lot of resource intensive supports for students or giving students more support than is necessary to get the outcome that we want for them. Okay, so let's talk about this three tiered model. Tier one is what we often call core reading instruction I like to think of it as primary prevention of reading failure. That's its job. So all students receive tier one or core reading instruction. The goal is to prevent reading failure for the vast majority of students. So here's where you'll hear people talk about getting 80% of your students to the grade level reading expectations with first reading instruction classroom reading instruction only, so tier one. It's typically delivered in a time block of 90 to 120 minutes. Within that time frame, that regular classroom reading instruction needs to be aligned to the reading research and to student needs. So tier one instruction should be planned by a building leadership team or a grade level team based on the universal screening data for that grade level. So the beginning of each year, middle and end of each year, teams of teachers who work with that grade level are looking at the screening results and making decisions about what will be taught in tier one and how it will be taught in tier one so that there's a tight alignment between the needs of the students and the students' um, instruction that they're receiving. So this means that tier one instruction should be highly differentiated. Just because everybody's getting it doesn't mean everybody gets the same thing. We want to make sure that what they are receiving is customized and lined up to their specific needs. So that means there's going to be a great deal of small group instruction, some whole group instruction, and decisions about which skills to teach and how much time to spend in those different formats really depend on the needs of your students. The place where people tend to go astray is they're not providing that 90 to 120 minutes to every student. They might have students leaving tier one to get their reading intervention, to get tier two supports or to get speech support or EL support making sure that everybody's getting that high quality first reading instruction in that 90 to 120 minute block. And the other place where folks tend to go wrong is what I mentioned about this not being a focus for the grade level or building level team and not using screening data to do that planning. Tier two instruction is what we sometimes talk about as strategic 
or targeted reading instruction. This would be for some students, not all, the students who are at risk or who have not made sufficient progress with tier one instruction only. Uh, this is thought of as that extra dose or double dose of instruction designed to accelerate student progress and catch them up to the grade level expectations. So the majority of students, something like 80%, should reach grade level expectations just through classroom reading instruction, no intervention. It's gonna take an additional dose of instruction to get another, let's say 15% of students to the grade level expectations. That's tier two. So tier two instruction is also planned by a grade level team or a building leadership team using the universal screening data, but also using perhaps some diagnostic data and using the progress monitoring data that's been collected on some students who are at risk as they've received tier one instruction. So I think about tier two as more and better instruction. So it's different from tier one along a couple of qualities. It needs to be even more specific to the needs of the students. So the students who are in each small group for tier two pretty much should have the same need. They should have the same strengths, the same next steps that they need to be taught. Those small group instructional doses need to be more explicit in terms of perhaps a more direct model, uh, more uh, systematic instruction, more opportunities to respond during instruction, and more practice opportunities. That's the way we intensify support. The folks who are delivering tier two need to be highly trained. They need to be skilled in delivering the approaches or programs that are being used for intervention. Tier two should close the gap. It should catch up most of the students. And this is where I think, you know, maybe sometimes schools uh, make a couple of mistakes in that they go straight from screening to putting students, quote unquote, into tier two, where there's a focus on intervention, where they haven't done the work to analyze and improve their tier one instruction. And they're expecting tier two to make up for a misalignment between first reading instruction and the needs of the students at the grade level. And this is where you end up uh, diluting whatever that resource is that you might call tier two. And you end up with groups that are too large, too wide of a range of skills of students within the group meeting infrequently for not enough time. So you would typically see in the research catching students up is going to take this extra dose of instruction, maybe something like 30 to 45 minutes, something between three and five days a week. And you'll know if it's working because you're collecting more frequent progress monitoring for students who are receiving tier two. And then finally, tier three instruction has kind of a blurred line between tier two and tier three, meaning that Tier three is considered to be more intensive, more resource intensive. Um, it, it's more explicit than tier two, but not necessarily a different program. So the purpose of this tertiary or intensive instructional support at tier three is to catch students up to grade level expectations or to allow them to make more progress than they were making with tier one and tier two. Students still receive their tier one instruction. All students get tier one. They may or may not continue to get tier two. It may be that they get tier one and tier three. So again, the lines are sort of blurred there. Uh, tier three instruction would typically be delivered in something like 45 to 60 minute blocks every day. It's more intensive in terms of group size, so um, could be individual, doesn't have to be, could be two or three students in a group, but those students have the same need for the next step for their instruction. It's very, very focused on the gaps in skills that students have. It is more explicit and systematic. It's delivered by a more highly trained instructor, and there is more frequent progress monitoring. The difference in who plans tier three 
is that this is when we get into having a student team, a team of professionals and family and community members that gather around the needs of this individual student. This is one of the ways that tier three is more intensive than tier two. We can plan tier two support looking at screening data. We can do that as a grade level team. We don't need to have individual student team meetings. But when it comes to tier three support, where we're delivering the most individualized and supportive and intensive instruction, we wanna individualize that to the student. So the team forms around that individual student. That's one of the reasons why it's more intensive, because we're going to be individualizing the incentives, the consequences, the ways to motivate the student, and really customizing it to the individual student needs. So I hope that gives you some ideas of at least the way that I think about describing and characterizing the three tiers in an MTSS model. I'm really interested in hearing your reactions and your questions.